All right, everyone, we start off today talking about Biden, of course, because his big flip-flop on taxation has come. I warned of this. There was a foreshock the other day when he was talking about increasing uh, the federal tax rate on businesses. So basically what you're looking at is a triple tax raise at the moment, because, of course, I'll get into his flip-flop regarding his lie, his 180 now, on the idea of people making uh, under 400 k a year not paying any new taxes. It was technically a lie to begin with, but now it's also an objective lie for many people in that bracket, and I'll explain why. First and foremost, there's a pinned comment if you're watching this on YouTube with links to four other video hosting sites that I use. Two of my videos every day are everywhere but YouTube, uh, and usually they're spicier topics, so you should definitely check me out on one or more of those sites uh, because they don't algorithmically demote you for talking about things that are unpopular or taboo. Anyway... When he was campaigning, you'll remember this, we have a dozen recordings of him saying it at multiple rallies, you know, the, his 12-person gatherings, so, so popular. His small gatherings, um, debates, both in the primaries uh, at the end and also against Trump. Joe Biden, running for the presidency, swore, he, he said this unequivocally, with, with period on the end, that's when you know he's serious. People making under $400,000 a year will not pay any new taxes. Now... At the time that this was said, I declared it to be mostly false on the premise that the Trump tax cuts, which phase out over a number of years because the Democrats demanded that, that it not be a permanent uh, tax decrease. In order to get his tax cuts passed, Trump had to therefore put the rider on. It phases out mostly over time. In fact, some of the marginal rates ultimately end up slightly higher. Again, the Democrats demanded that. It's not Trump's fault. He had to get tax relief done to boost the economy. He did that. It was a success. Then COVID comes along, of course, and then the rest is history. Biden swore he wouldn't raise taxes. In not supporting extending those tax cuts, technically everyone would have gotten new taxes anyway. It would hit, it hit people like me, by the way, in my particular situation hardest, because, of course, I get my income as a self-employed individual. Book royalties, donations and stuff. You have a 15% surcharge on top of all of your other taxes for the first 100 k You could pay up to 15000 additional dollars of federal taxes if you're self-employed as opposed to working for a 9 to 5. It's ridiculous. It's regressive. It holds people back. That's the way it is. Trump passed an offset, up to 20% of qualifying total income uh, if it's self-employed. That's a huge relief. <laughs> it's $3,000 a year uh, on 100 k of income. That's not inconsiderable. But anyway, that was just a subjective lie from Biden. Technically, he's not passing a new tax. He's just letting tax cuts expire to go back to the pre-tax cut rate. This is him explicitly now stating that some people who are making under 400 k a year, which he swore up and down for people was the cutoff for new taxes, will actually pay more. Why? Because they're married. So in other words, Ma and Pa are each making 200 k a year. Well, together they're making 400 k but here's the thing, Biden didn't say tax-paying total entities. He did not say uh, 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 filers of forms, he said individuals. No individual making less than $400,000 a year, which is a hefty amount, will pay a penny in new taxes. That is a lie. He is now coming out unequivocally and stating, well, yeah, there's some hundreds of thousands of people in the country that that doesn't apply to. Now, of course, if you're making 200 k a year, you're doing pretty well. Eh, certainly, if your household's making 400 k you probably, a, a marginal tax hike probably doesn't break your back. The problem is there are some people, uh, sole proprietors, small business owner sort of situation, where you look wealthier on paper than you are, and to tax them during a recession when you've got more unemployment, I think it's like 6.5 at the moment or something like that, uh, it's above six, I know that, and in some cases much higher in some states, specifically blue ones. Uh, you got higher unemployment, you have a recession, the possibility of further economic damage from lockdowns because COVID is, is still around. Um, now is not the time to raise any taxes, and just the other day he's talking about, well, maybe we're going to, in order to pay for all of my new spending programs, we're going to have to raise the business tax rate. Okay. Raising taxes on corporations, and again, he swears that it won't impact small and regional businesses. It's only aimed at the billionaires, and we're going to wage war on the bill. I'm going to wage war on the people that literally funded my fucking campaign to the tune of a trillion dollars. That's not going to happen, number one. And number two, it'll drag the other brackets up for small businesses, for individuals, by the way, as well. And it's the wrong thing to do when you have economic problems. Tinkering with the tax system, if you're going to tinker at all, 
what you should be doing is say, fuck the stimulus. We're just, for people who are paying taxes, we're going to give them uh, relief at the front end, and when they get their returns, they get more of their own money back, or something like that. Not really a stimulus, it's just we've, we've retroactively lowered the year's tax rate. That's what they should be doing. But of course, the Democrats don't want you to have upward mobility. This is all aimed towards small businesses, towards the self-employed, towards middle and upper middle class workers, towards working class entrepreneurs. This broad spectrum of society are the ones that are going to be abused. I warned of this for literally years. The problem is populism rewards these people because they are hardworking, they're trying to do the right thing, they're constantly abused. The people at the top are sheltered. They're the donor class. They're not going to face any adverse effects from any of Biden's proposals. The marginal increases that they suffer can be offshored or prevented through an army of accountants. If you think that Jeff Bezos is a... When Bernie Sanders scores brownie points from his brain-dead fucking mindless lemming fans by saying, Well, Jeff Bezos is too wealthy and there's economic problems and this is in unethical, it shouldn't be happening. He's not going to do jack shit. Certainly he's not going to get the neoliberals who get money from Bezos to do jack shit. They're not going to go after Bill Gates. They're not going to go after Sundar Pichai. They're not going to go after Google or Walmart or any of these other big entities. They're going to go after farms, small businesses, people like me, people like you. That's where the money is because we're the, we don't have armies of accountants and lawyers to protect us. And then people at the, like the bottom 20%, they do okay. They get a little more welfare, but then their cost of living rises. So they sort of break even. If you vote for neoliberal tax proposals, globalism, essentially you're telling the poor, we'll keep you poor, but at least you won't starve. You're telling 80% of society, fuck you, and you're telling the 1%, here, have some more wealth. The inequality has been created. Why do you think that wealth inequality in the United States started creeping up so much more quickly around the time that globalism was incepted and the Eastern world started being opened up under the Nixonian strategy of detente and then Reagan's strategies in the 80s? Why do you think that it's around that time, 70s and 80s, that all that trend begins? Oh, I wonder why. Could it be we're in implementing the wrong policies for the last 50 fucking years? That's exactly what we've done. It's been, the harm has been done by the neocons and neolibs that are currently running the ship of state. So this is a flip-flop. It's an objective lie. Uh, he swore, again, people making under 400k a year wouldn't pay new taxes. It was already subjectively wrong in a roundabout way. Now it's objectively wrong. He's openly proclaiming it. Oh, but, you know, and some of his fans, oh, my God, you look at the Twitter liber liberal echo chamber of Biden's 10 fans. Well, it's okay. If you're making 200000 a year, you can, you can chip in more. In what realm of reality is a person making two hundred k a year super wealthy? They're not Jeff Bezos. The difference between that person and you making minimum wage is literally nothing compared to the sort of people that actually buy into the political class. The people that actually donate to political campaigns and send lobbyists to Congress, and Congress themselves in many cases, they've got such fantastic degrees of wealth. Some of the people in Congress are worth 50, 100 million dollars. Such fantastic amounts of wealth. They don't, they don't see a person making 200k a year and see, oh, well, their gilded cage has an extra bedroom and a loft. Oh, they've got two acres of land. They're super wealthy. How do you expect... You, what, can I ask this? These liberals that are in support of this kind of proposal. What common denominator minimal standard of living do you expect people to live at? And, and, and be happy with that. That little level of upward mobility. Having a shack on, on a city plot? That appears to be how the maximum standard of living they think that everyone who's not super rich should live. They never aim that criticism at Hollywood or at Congress, or at the billionaire class that funds people like Joe Biden. It's interesting how Al Gore can have three planes spewing out carbon emissions, and they have no problem with it, and if you even bring that up that he's a fucking goddamn hypocrite, then all of a sudden you're, you're right-wing, or, or there's something wrong with you. Well, this is a flip-flop. You point it out to these people, that cognitive dissonance kicks in, well, it's not, no, 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 because they are making 400k, but, but it's not an individual, it's a family. It's like two, three people that are filing, well, a couple, like, filing together. Well, they're not making 400K. They're making 200K. One of them makes 50K, the other makes 350. And the, and the one that makes 50K probably feels a little bit awkward about that. Uh, but, but they're making 400K. But it's not a person. <laughs> you can't explain it to them. It's impossible to get it through their fucking thick skulls. Oh, my God. 
So yeah, now we're, we're the taxes are up for another block of society. So so far we've got the the increase of taxes for about 90% of the population, except for certain freelancing groups. Actually, this is a problem with the Trump tax code, uh, based on the expiration of the Trump tax cut. So basically, everyone gets a marginal increase. New taxes on businesses at the federal level and and on uh, trade and so forth. Uh, and then you have this. So now you've got a whole new chunk of upper middle class society at the very least. 200K, again, upper middle class, marginally wealthy. Uh, at this point, you know, $100,000 a year sounded like a lot when I was a kid. Now it's like, well, you're a bit outside of the core middle class, but <laughs> the gilded cage is still a cage at that point. Uh, so now they get fucked. Dude, that's your doctors and, and lawyers and shit like that. That's big professionals. And a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs are going to get crushed under by Joe Biden's Beijing Manchurian goddamn administration of ineptitude and dementia and stupidity. That's about all. Peace out.